Hi, this is Shedi and today I'm going to be discussing with you Morihai Ueshiba, the founder of Aikido's three divine visions and they each represent a certain period in his life and in my opinion they are very insightful because it shows us truly what the goal of Aikido is because uh, I'm sure by now we all know that Aikido has like this... Uh, false message or advertising behind it some say it's the best self-defense art some say it's the best meditation some say it's too deadly for mma uh, a lot of people have different claims uh, but in my opinion just by going through morihai ueshiba's life uh, it should shed a lot of light of what aikido truly is and my opinion is constantly evolving and trying to see things through the stuff that I'm going through right now and also the stuff that Morihai Ueshiba himself went through and we, in my opinion we should see this from both sides my own and his in order to try to understand the most of the situation so for those of you who don't know yes he is very peaceful the art of peace uh, he was very much into Shintoism you can see him here meditating praying etc but he was not a harmless man let me repeat this he was not a harmless man what do i mean by that he went to war he fought against the russians in the uh, russo japanese war he won he also fought bandits and pirates so conflict and sparring and fighting to literally to death is not something uh, strange to this man and yet he came up with something that quote unquote doesn't work so there must be another reason, there must be another thing that we should be looking at here and that is his life's evolution and progression in his thoughts and in his philosophy because I believe personally that we cannot uh, just learn from someone's conclusion all the time and be it and then try to go from there. I believe that all of us, especially when it comes to the evolvement of our minds and as humans, we should go through the same processes ourselves. So without any further ado, let's start with the first vision of Morihai Ueshiba and that is in 1925. So he had experiences that impacted him greatly. So the first one happened in 1925 after he had defeated a naval officer who had a boken or a wooden sword and Morihai Ueshiba was unarmed without hurting the officer and Yoeshiba went back to his garden and he said the following words I felt the universe suddenly quake and that a golden spirit sprung up from the ground veiled my body and changed my mind into a golden one at the same time my body became light I was able to understand the whispering of the birds and was clearly aware of the mind of God the creator of the universe. At that moment, I was enlightened. The source of Budo, the martial way, is God's love. The spirit of loving pr protection for all being. Budo is not felling of an opponent by force, nor is it a tool to lead the world to destruction with arms. True Budo is to accept the spirit of the universe keep the peace of the world, correctly produce, protect, and cultivate all beings in nature. So here you can see after the first vision that happened after a sparring session, he went and realized that it is to protect and leave everyone unharmed, just as we say that the best fight is to neutralize everything and go back uh, parting ways, both unharmed and uh, becoming better people so this is essentially what this vision was about and he took it in a more uh, religious sense that that's what god's love is is to protect you and also uh, protect all beings and enlighten them and just make peace with the world so the second one happened 15 years later in 1940 uh, when engaged in the uh, purification ritual called misogi so he said Around 2 a.m., I suddenly forgot all the martial techniques I had ever learned. 
the techniques of my teachers appeared completely new. Now they were vehicles for the cultivation of life, knowledge, and virtue, not devices to throw people with. So here you can see that he is starting to look at martial arts differently than the normal way of seeing things. For example, we try to say add kuzushi to Aikido and it will be uh, functional or add karate and finish with Aikido, then it will be functional. Uh, add Aikido to BJJ. You know, everyone has his own uh, way of adding things in order to make it functional. But here he is telling you that he's starting to see them as vehicles of cultivation of life knowledge and not devices to throw people with. So that phrase alone uh, sh says a lot. It was 1940. Keep in mind, he was born in 1883. So he was starting to become an old man at this point, And he had his fair share of uh, life battles, if you, if you want to call it that. So his third experience was in 1942. He said during it was during the uh, worst fighting in the, during the World War II, and there Ueshiba had a vision of the great spirit of peace. He says, The way of the warrior has been misunderstood. It is not a means to kill and destroy others. Those who seek to compete and better one another are making a terrible mistake. To smash, injure, or destroy is the worst thing a human can do. The real way of a warrior is to prevent such slaughter. It is the art of peace, the power of love. So here you see these three visions, they progressively get uh, more in depth as time goes by. The first one being from a friendly sparring, the second from a purification ritual, and the third after seeing the massacres of the World War II, which is still by today's standards arguably the worst one of all um, so here you start to see that he wants to do things differently and also he wants to change the way we look at techniques and thus we have Aikido so in 1942 uh, when uh, Ueshiba joined the Dai Nippon Butoku Kai in Kyoto it was eventually the separation from Takeda and it became its own Aikibudo or Aikido. So, what do we learn from this? So, the first thing that I myself came to as a conclusion is that you cannot teach someone your process of thinking. They have to go through it alone. What do I mean by that? So, Aikido is the conclusion of Morihai Ueshiba's life, of battles, of uh, conflict, of turmoil all of that he says he came to a conclusion that i don't want to see them the way i saw them before as a way to smash and be like this fierce warrior like the book of five rings so on and so forth but rather i want to see them as techniques in order to demonstrate this philosophy of peace and love um and i agree but we cannot uh just start I, without any martial knowledge, without any fighting experience, or worse, someone who just was weak and got beaten all his life, just start Aikido and only does Aikido because, first of all, they have to go through what um, O Sensei went through. They have to spar, they have to fight in order to appreciate Aikido. I can speak from myself, from experience, that after two years of Judo, I now appreciate Aikido more than I did when I was doing Aikido, and that's is saying a lot. So, my point is, Aikido should not be just uh, practiced alone, uh, without any martial experience. That's why when he first started teaching it, he sent after the some of the best and finest martial artists because I believe that he knew that experienced artist or martial artist would understand his message a lot more than someone with zero martial experience because you cannot um, understand the value of resolving conflict, neutralizing a situation without you yourself engaging in, you know, sparring, rolling, getting tapped out, getting thrown. He literally went to war. Um, and that alone is enough reason to not start Aikido without any martial experience too. Um, 
you know, it's very similar like in life. When we are young, we go through troubles in school. Then we start to go f look for college and majors and we do overnights. We have troubles with relationships, with friends, at work. Uh, we think that life is this big idea of getting successful and rich and living this uh, edgy style of traveling and being successful. But then after all the turmoil, all the psychological troubles and physical troubles that we have as we grow older we say we come to a point where we say you know what at this point i don't want none of that stuff that i said i wanted when i was 15 or 16 or 20 but i would just want to be happy and uh, some peace of mind and i believe aikido is this particular representation in martial arts because after getting tapped out uh, going to call uh, going to war uh, fighting pirates uh, all this he he wanted a way to just be at peace and just be happy and that is how aikido is born in my opinion and that and it can be like a quote unquote retirement home to martial artists who sparred all their lives so if i want to do aikido now i would probably do it after i had my good fair share of training and really sharpening my technique and being just done with uh, sparring and and overall just beating my my body up i have people leaving comments you know it's not about fighting stop trying to suggest things you know i've i've done judo i've done karate i've done muay thai we've done all that now we just want to do something for fun and ironically they have it right in my opinion so Yes, we can add Kuzushi, we can add it to BJJ, all that stuff. But in my opinion, in order to truly manifest O Sensei's vision, it should be done in two ways. The first one being after a long process of competing, sparring, and overall, you know, beating your body up, then go into Aikido and truly embrace the philosophy. Not just do it from a technical standpoint, but do it also. Uh, of why it was done and really understand Moriha Ueshiba as a man and number two cross train it with something else do not just do it alone you will not understand what it is uh, because you will truly appreciate it even from a technical standpoint because uh, when John Danaher was on the JRE podcast he said you know Taekwondo on its own it has its trouble but if you add this 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 to other contexts like the axe kick etc to a well-rounded fighter you will create something beautiful so we can say the same thing about the Aikido techniques and also the philosophy of Aikido because it will help us complete all around everything. So kind of like an MMA camp when you have everything, Aikido, it should be added from the mental standpoint. But like I said, truly understand where this man is coming from. Don't just say, oh, it's peaceful just because there's no competition. That is a big statement and it should not be said so lightly. So. Uh, I believe that yes it should be done separately yes it can be you can have some fun with very light sparring experience some resistance just to sharpen your technique but not overall competing and really smashing your ears and bulging fingers and all that stuff because it has its own purpose so I remember when I uh, found out that you know Aikido is not what I thought it was I I initially wanted to still continue practicing because first of all i love it but two uh, i said you know what maybe aikido should not teach me how to fight but rather how to get over my past and that is a big message and something that you know it's really great in theory but then i kept thinking about it and i came to the conclusion that okay but i will still be a harmless man i will still be a gardener in a war zone if even if i got if i quote unquote got over my past so i figured no i should go out i should train i should really beat my body up and then maybe i'll appreciate aikido and that's what happened so i cannot go through the life process of morihai ueshiba just by training aikido i should go through it all with fighting sparring all of it because that's how when i will truly understand it for example i have nine years of college uh, studies i have three degrees in college and i've had multiple works i've traveled etc i cannot teach my understanding and the way i see life to a 12 year old 
now they have to go through it all on their own and the same with aikido so i hope you found this insightful if you have anything else to add please share it down below this was shady and thank you for listening